of sloths and women <laughs> is not because I'm, I'm just correcting <laughs> a little bit of sloths and women is quite a different story than of mice and men. <laughs> if only because not many people can picture a sloat. A sloat is an animal that lives in South America and Central America, and it has a nice furry, it's a nice furry animal, it has a very thick belly and very long forearms and a very, very sweet face. My story starts with Lucia. This baby sloat, as you can see, is keeping this twig very strongly. And so I want to set the record straight because there's an urban myth going around that sloats grab onto their own arms, especially baby sloats, because they think it's a branch. So please don't believe it, because it's not true. As you can see, the baby sloat really holds on to the twig because it's very, very scared to fall. Why are people so interested in sloats? Because they have very special qualities, characteristics. One of them is that they have an amazing capacity to adapt. Adapt to very stressful situations. And I know there's some women thinking, oh, I know about that. <laughs> uh, so, and indeed, you see a very big sloat here. And her name was Smokey. She came in during the rescue in 2012. And she was the only sloat that got wounded. And so we brought her inside so that we could clean the wound every day. And inside were also all the orphaned babies. And as sloats are, they are actually solitary animals. And they normally only have one baby. And we do know that they sometimes accept babies from other uh, mothers, like orphans. But Smokey completely adapted to this very stressful situation where her house was being torn down and took care of 17 babies. Then they have an amazing capacity for suffering. As you can see, this sloat fell out of a tree, as we were told. Her name is Panama, which is really strange because they told us she fell on her nose. If you know anything about sloat anatomy, then you know that it's really weird that if you have such a fat belly that you would fall on your nose when you fall out of a tree. So we were thinking the only way she could have fa fallen out of a tree on her nose is if you push the tree down, actually. So she received surgery. Um, here she is on the table um, in the uh, surgery. After a month, she healed completely. And we were able to um, release her. And uh, she was very happy, I can tell you. Uh, and she went back to a forest of which we were certain that uh, there was no, not going to be deforestation. So they have this immense capacity for suffering, but also to endure and to continue on their path. They're very smart, also very smart animals. They're slow, so how can they be smart? People always say, oh, she's beautiful, so she cannot be smart. These are misconceptions we have about slowness and beauty. And I can tell you this animal, Danitia is her name, very intelligent. She was so intelligent that she came to us and we could clearly see that she had been with people. And why did we know this? Because her nails were filed. 
very nicely. Uh, they didn't put any <laughs> lacquer on it, but we could clearly see that she hadn't done that herself. And as you can see, she's in the toilet here. And we thought the first time we saw her in the toilet that, hmm, maybe she wanted to drink. Then the second time we saw her in the toilet, we're like, it's not normal for slots to drink, so what is she doing? And then we realized that after the fourth time, that actually she knew how to use a human toilet. And she was actually using the toilet like we did. So the only thing she didn't manage was to flush it yet, so we had to do that for her. But we taught her then how to go to the toilet like sloths do. And sloths go out in the garden, and they do this once a week. And uh, so she managed, she learned it very quickly because, as I said, she was a very intelligent sloth. And then she actually went uh, outside on her own, would go to the toilet and come back in. So she was definitely an animal that knew how to live with humans. Sloats also have an enormous capacity for persistence. If they know something that they want, they will go for it. And this is Lucas. And Lucas was a baby sloat that came in when we um, were doing this rescue. And he was a he's a male sloat. And actually, the only other male sloat that he allows near him is the one that he's sitting with there. Because a male sloat doesn't want another male sloat near his leaves. So recently, we had another male sloat that was brought in. And uh, Lucas decided that he was too close to his leaves. And so he wanted to fight with him. So he went up to the... Uh, other sloth and started fighting with him. When sloths fight, they actually don't really touch each other, um, as you can see. But the other sloth was like screaming as if he was being killed. So what we did, we took Lucas, brought him somewhere far away, and thought, you know, that then everybody would cool down. But no, within a minute, he was back. You won't believe that. Uh, we didn't put him next to him, it was far away, but he stay fast, faster than you think. Then we again removed him and put him further away. This time, within two minutes, he was back. He knew exactly what the other slot was, and he started attacking the intruder again. So then we had to, as you can see, <laughs> they are quite fierce when they uh, know what to do. He then went to, um, we put him in another room and closed the door because we decided that that was the only way to get him out. Why didn't Lucas open the door? No, well, not because he couldn't do it, but he hadn't learned how to do it. Because slots also have an enormous capacity to teach each other things. And again, this shows how intelligent they are. This sloat that you see here, Bo, she used to live in my office. And as you can see, she was checking if I was working hard enough. She's uh, hanging under my desk. Um, and when she became older, she started roaming the house. And one fine day, she found that in this bathroom was another sloat sitting, Wimpy was his name. And his um, fingers had been cut very brutally by somebody. And he had to stay with us for two years, because that's how long it took for him to grow back his fingers. And she he really liked Wimpy. So she went back, and um, she, she wanted to sit with him. But we thought, no, we don't want them to mate, so we removed it. Then, she started sitting next to the door. So every time we opened the door, she wanted to go inside. But 
we didn't want them together. Then what she finally did, she started opening the door herself. What was really amazing, though, was that at a certain moment, other slots came in because we decided we would allow them to sit together, but new slots would come in. And they somehow, without having contact with her, knew how to open the door. So how do you explain that? They somehow had a way of communicating with each other. So they're very smart. Then they have an enormous capacity for nurturing. And we have three documented cases of sloats that uh, actually male sloats that nurture. Well, what happened, this is a two-toed baby sloat who actually was very um, needy. And we got in another sloat, a male sloat, and you can see them here together. But it is a three-fingered sloat. So it's like a cat and a dog, you know, living together. So the three-fingered sloat, Wimpy too, he adopted this little one. And he's been teaching him all kinds of things. And in the morning, you can see them together, like this. And the, the little one is now still a baby, but he will grow to be twice as big as the tree-toed slot. And that means probably that we will see him going with uh, the small one, who is called Beertje. Then they have an enormous capacity Actually, their slowness really shows not slowness. They are deliberate. They know exactly what to do. So this slot, Harvey, he was trying to climb, and he's holding on to a very small twig. And he is really trying to get a good hanging, we would say for humans, to get a good footing, before climbing up. And he indeed managed to do that without a problem. He didn't come crashing down because he was slow. And a friend of mine recently said, whatever you do slowly and with effort is sustainable. And this was something her father had told her often. So what is the connection between slows and women? There's a number of women, I think, who share these qualities. And I would like to recognize them, because in the past years, they have helped me enormously. These women are persistent. They are smart. They are intelligent. They have a capacity for nurturing. So I recognize their work. Then there is something else. Sloats and women share. And here we see that we are releasing Danitsha with her baby because women and sloth both need freedom. And we need space, a clean, healthy environment that, has, that is abundant so that we can fulfill all our dreams and achieve our potential. And that is, I think, a universality, the universal strength that sloths and women share. I thank you for your attention.